Welcome to the channel, guys, for California Farmer. And uh, I'm here with the Fowler brothers, uh, Zach and Garrett. And uh, we're just gonna do a little bit of uh, talking about what this machine behind us here is doing. This is a Cat D11, D11R. Um, right now it weighs about 210,000 pounds. Uh, right now we're we're ripping about six feet deep out here. Uh, this tree, this is this field was watermelons before. It'll be going to almonds this fall. Be planted. Um, the point of what we're doing is is we are deep ripping about six feet deep just to break break through hard pan. There's a hard pan layer down about three or four feet, and also some plow pan on top of that, just from the years of farming. So um, what we're doing is we're breaking through that just to increase water penetration and uh, nutrient penetration. So. When we water, um, the almond roots are about three to four feet deep, so we want that water to go past that. That way, the water doesn't sit at that level, because at, at that level, you can get root rot and phytophthora. You need you need to have oxygen flow at that at that level. So, um, the reason we're using a machine this big uh, is because we need the weight and we need the horsepower to rip through something that hard. What horsepower does this D11 have? Uh, this machine, this is a 3208 motor, and uh, it has about 936 horsepower in it right now. So. What uh? What's the fuel capacity on this thing? Uh, this is a five or I believe this is a four hundred and fifty uh, gallon tank, and it'll burn through roughly about four hundred and fifty gallons in about ten hours. Wow. Yeah. So when we're running two shifts, we need we need a mass amount of fuel. We'll bring in a four thousand gallon tank because we'll go through about you know a thousand to twelve hundred gallons. So it's just burning through yeah. fuel. That's crazy. Yeah. We'll how do how often do you have to like do the typical servicing on these? You know, cleaning the air filters because like out here you can tell. This ground is real uh, powdery, real fine, so you know that there's a lot getting into those air filters. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we require our operators blow these machines out and fully service and grease these every 10 hours. So every shift, when we're really busy, we'll run 24 hours a day. We usually get about 22 hours in an hour for each service. So yeah, each guy will ship and uh, blow out on their own shift. Okay. This is huge. So this shank here, I see there's some, uh, you got some stuff going on right here. What's yeah. all this? So this is, uh, these are just guards that we put on the shank uh, to protect the shank, because obviously this ground is very abrasive. So we don't want the shank to take the uh, brunt of the impact. Even if you can see right here, all this is wearing out. So we'll come in and hard face all this just because of how abrasive the ground is. Um, so we're just protecting the shank. We don't want to wear that down. Um, so these are easy to replace. We'll swap these out. And same with these right here. These are just protectors. This is the tip, the shin guard here. So we're just protecting the shank. Okay. Yeah. Now you said you've broken these before. Is that a cheap fix? Uh, no. One of these shanks, uh, a D11 shank, is about, I think it's about 12 grand. Oh my uh, gosh. Yeah. All right. So this is Zach Fowler, and he's going to give us a little more information about uh, the shank and deep ripping and stuff like that. So how much does this shank weigh? About 8,000, 6 to 8,000 pounds, depending on the shank uh, length. Okay. Yeah. So about six to 8,000 pounds. And when you're ripping through the ground, are you at this angle? Are you going flat like this? So when you start, it all depends on how you start. So if, say you have hard pan down to five feet and you need to break through that, you'll actually start with this shank farther back to get that ripper point down and start, start breaking through that hard pan. And as you start moving forward and lowering the shank, you'll bring that shank down to this angle here and it'll actually rip through the hard pan. Um, these uh, trackers are primarily used for ripping rock and pushing uh, dirt or coal, whatever they wherever they came from. So when you're ripping, when you're ripping rock, that 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 uh, shank's only sitting down about this far. So here, when you're ripping down six feet, you got to make sure you can get under that hard pan and actually do what the machine's made to do. If that hard pan's uh, five feet down, you can actually pick the whole back of this machine up if you're not ripping the correct way. So you want to make sure that thing, you know, we're right in that dirt level right about here and getting the best uh, penetration for what the farmer's paying for. Yeah, for sure. That's crazy. It can it can pick up the machine then. Yeah, that hold back into this yeah, thing. Absolutely. That's yeah, it's a strong. So this is referred to as the tool bar of the tractor. So this is what carries the tool itself, and uh, this is actually a counterweight for the back. So this whole section here is actually a weight that's added to the back to uh, help get that shank farther down on the ground. All right, Zach. So what kind of shifts are these tractors running? Are they are they going twenty four seven? What are they doing? So we'll run uh, twenty four hours a day during the peak season. Uh, we'll usually get about 22 hours operational time in with no breakdowns. That gives an hour for each shift to service. So we'll run 12 hour shifts, um, usually 12 to 12. That way the operator doesn't have to run all night or all day. They can kind of split the daylight. Um, so they'll run 24 hours during the peak season. During the off season, we're usually on 12 to 16 hours, depending on how much ground we have to cover and stuff like that, where, the, where we are in location wise. So if we're, if we're you know, uh, up in Sacramento, sometimes we'll send two guys up there to get the job done quicker and stuff like that. 
Okay, cool. Speaking of location, what's the furthest you've gone with your business taking one of these deep rippers? Arizona. Arizona. Yeah, we're doing work in Arizona right now. So what are you what are you ripping for in Arizona? Pistachios. Pistachios. Yep. Okay. And we have two. We actually had two D tens, three when we were we were doing the whole entire project. Now we're on the tail end of it now. Okay. Yep. Now what is it like to transport something like this, especially even a long distance like that? So every dozer is different. Even even going out of California is different. So if, as far as the D eleven is concerned, when we transport this, the dozer has to come off. And it has to go on a separate uh, trailer that weighs about thirty thousand pounds, twenty to thirty thousand pounds, depending on the width of the dozer. Uh, the shank actually has to come out, so that'll actually get it to the legal weight, so they can transport it on the nine axle. So a nine axle trailer, don't quote me, is about 110, 100 to 110 feet long, so it supports the weight of this dozer while it's uh, under transport. Um, now, when you're looking at this compared to a D10, like our D10s have uh, cut down blades, so they'll actually have shorter blades, so you don't have to take the blades off the haul here in California. Um, every county. Um, is different with their requirements. Sometimes you have to have pilot cars in the front of the front and the back of the trailer. Most of the time you do, sometimes you don't. Um, on the D10s, when we haul them to Arizona, they have to come completely apart as far as the, the dozers coming off. They can't be hauled with dozers on there because in the Arizona, their width requirements are a little bit different than here in California. So it takes some time. Usually it takes a mechanic half a day to break something like this down to yeah. get ready to transport. It's an extensive, extensive thing, even just going from field to field, right? Because yeah. you still have to break it down to be that legal call it a day you know even even something like this where you take the shank out you're looking at a day down just to haul it even if it's from here you know here in manteca to let's call it modesto it could be it's a day that's a crazy. day down yeah. yeah no that makes sense All right, so back to the deep rip and parch portion of this. I'm looking at these uh, rows here and they look pretty straight. So do these tractors use GPS? Yeah, so our uh, dozers are equipped to GPS so we can do tree row ripping. Um, the difference between this GPS and a uh, tractor GPS that has that marks for tree rows or planting um, tractors is that this can uh, deviate you know, an inch or two coming down. Those tractors don't deviate more than like a quarter inch. Uh, when you're ripping, it's not going to make that much of a difference. Yeah. So yeah, we offer tree row ripping. Some farmers just want to rip the tree rows and that's it. Um, so this tractor and all the other tractors have GPS on them. Alright Garrett, so how tall is this machine? This machine is 14 feet 9 inches. So now do you have uh, trouble with that with like legal limits for height and stuff and hauling? Uh, yeah, so when, when we haul this thing we put in permits for the county and then they give us routes to take. So there's some overpasses and some bridges that aren't up to weight for this. So yeah, they give us a route. So Garrett, do these tracks ever break? Do they ever fall off? Yeah, sometimes it's pretty rare that it does, but we have broken, uh, there's a master link in this thing that holds the whole thing together. So sometimes that, if we're ripping in really hard ground, it's just a lot and we've broken them before and the whole thing will come flying off. Jeez. What's, what's driving this thing? Uh, what's driving it is that final drive right here. Uh, this final drive inside this is the uh, pretty much the transmission and the drive. So everything comes to here right here. This thing's full of gears. So everything in there kind of makes this thing turn and, and right there, that's what turns the drive. So what's going on here in the cab? I see that I'm kind of twisted sideways sitting here. I'm not really straight on. What's going on there? Yeah, so the reason you're sitting sideways is uh, it's easier for you to look out the back window if you're facing a certain direction instead of sitting straight on and you know turn your head all the way around all the time. So for sure. over here on this side, we have the controls. This is what steers the machine. If you pulled this back, the tractor would go left. If you pulled it right, it'd go right. This is how you go forward, uh, neutral and reverse. These are your gears here. Uh, Got your blade controls over here and the ripper controls back here. And then for, for the GPS, is this the GPS right here? It is, yeah, this is your GPS here. Uh, on the roof here, we have the uh, the satellite receiver here. And so, yeah, everything is transmitted from there and then back to here. Okay, so, so does the driver, does he watch this GPS and he makes the adjustments? Yeah, he does, yeah, he watches that. And then on here, there's a little light, which will tell him if he's in line with where he's at or if he needs to move over. Okay, and then uh, I know with these dozers, uh, you're not it's it's always at a full rpm right it's not like you're you're not like you're 
pushing an accelerator, right? Correct, yeah. This is a decelerator. It works the opposite of a gas pedal. So, you know, on a gas pedal, you push it down, obviously, give it more throttle. If you push this down, it'll decelerate. So it'll lose RPMs. So, uh, Garrett, I guess the last question I have for you is, uh, can I drive it? Absolutely. Let's take it for a pass. Yeah. Right on, that was awesome getting to drive that, that was sweet. Thank you guys for letting us uh, come out here and ask you some questions about this and uh, taking some time out of your day. If uh, anybody in the area needs any uh, deep ripping services or any other farm services, uh, where do they contact you? How do they contact you? Yeah, so they can just call us on the office phone number, which is 209-232-4402. Uh, and uh, they can get a hold of us there. We'll come out and give you a quote for free. And uh, we don't just offer deep ripping, we offer orchard removal, the ripping, um, and the disking and everything thereafter, even including tree planting. So if you need anything, just feel free to give us a call.